So now I want to talk a little bit about some of the lessons that we've learned over the past few years for some of you that may be considering creating your own video program or maybe if you've already started that program and, and you're having some of the same challenges that we are. The first piece I wanted to talk about was analytics. Based on this information, it can really shape how you're creating your content and your technical output. A couple examples that we ran into at Zappos, when we first started creating product video, we realized a few things. Uh, one, most of our customers were actually viewing our videos from work. Um, that created some bandwidth uh, restraints, uh, it created browser restraints, and because of that, we had to adjust how we were outputting our video. It had to be able to be played on flash, uh, and also we, we couldn't go for that big HD video that we had initially envisioned. A second piece of that was understanding where our customers were viewing from. You know, in the beginning, we saw a lot of traffic coming from work, and then slowly it started to kind of increase to the mobile device. When we started seeing that number go up, we realized that we had to make a change and support not just our customers that were on Flash, but our customers that needed to be able to view those videos from the mobile device. A few lessons learned as far as content creation is concerned. In the beginning, we were putting this really cool looking 10 second bumper to the beginning of every one of our videos. Uh, the, the logo came out, there was cool music playing, and then we started looking at the analytics and we realized that most of our customers were not hanging around for 10 seconds. They were dropping off either because that was boring or because you know the attention span isn't gonna be that great. Because we realized that, we took that 10 second bumper out. Within those 10 seconds, the customer would not even see the product. So we've reduced our chances of conversion to 0%. Another lesson learned for us was understanding which part of the video was most relevant to our customers. Something that we noticed is our customers kept scrubbing to certain sections of the video. There were certain pieces that seemed more relevant or valuable to them. And so we're able to sort of move that up in the order so that they would be able to see the piece that was helping them make that purchasing decision sooner. Another item that we noticed is there were certain videos that were much more popular and that popularity was based on product type. It seemed that products that had any sort of issues like with fit or uh, you know, a certain material, uh, customers were really watching those videos and what that said to us was that they're really trying to find out everything they can here. And so in those cases, we made more content driven videos. We created additional how-to videos to sort of supplement that experience. And then also, something to consider is on your site, where the video icon placement is at. When we initially started out with videos, the icon was not very easy to find. Uh, we went through a lot of user testing, and even though we would tell the user, there really is a video on this page, they would never find it. By moving that video icon above the fold and where the customer could actually see it, we increased our video views by over 120,000 views a day. What that said to us was that customers wanted to see video, we just weren't putting it in front of them. Another piece would be brand representation. So it says like, would you want this person representing your brand? Obviously not. For us, we picked people specifically based on their personalities and the fact that we felt like they fit who we were as a company. I would certainly recommend this for any of, uh, any of you guys that are looking at adding these videos. When they're on your site or they're shared out socially or even if they're on YouTube, uh, it would be great to have each video be a representation of your brand.